What's happening folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Flock of Seagulls. And we're returning to Dream Come True 1986. I have noticed as we've gone through this record that it doesn't seem to be everyone's favorite, at least by comparison with the earlier material, and I definitely can hear the difference between the somewhat mysterious early synth rock sound of those first couple records and this album, which appears to have a bit more of a dance floor electronic sound to it. Nevertheless, the next track on the record is Cry Like a Baby, which is a phrase you often use to denigrate or criticize someone who is perhaps being overly emotional, reacting in much too strong of a way, or perhaps just being inconsolable, or as a more mature or adult approach to some setback or frustration or disappointment would be to attempt to solve or get around the problem or at least accept it and move on. Whereas a baby might just keep crying and crying and crying until they can get what they want or at least hope that they can get what they want through that complaint, if you will. So yeah, I would expect it to maybe relate to that type of attitude, someone who's inconsolable and overly emotional. Nevertheless, it could have some different figurative meaning or just a, be a concept within a larger story. So I'll see what I can pick up on a first listen. This is A Flock of Seagulls. The track is Cry Like a Baby and it's from their 1986 album, Dream Come True.
interesting. I won't lie. I do, again, notice the marked difference between a track like this and I Ran. And while that's maybe unfair in that I Ran, I think, is, uh, at least as far as I can tell, their most famous track and the one that is still the highest, or the most remembered and the highest regarded, nevertheless, uh, definitely a different sound, a, a bigger sort of, you know, arena keyboard sound even. I will say, sonically, a lot of it felt like this train that just kept chugging along and chugging along and turning over, but I really enjoyed those moments. I don't know if it was like post-chorus, or maybe it was like the beginning of the chorus, but these smooth pad, like, ambient synths would come in and just sort of swoop across the track. I really enjoyed those moments in particular, sonically. Lots of overlaid vocals, like overlapping vocals, and in general, both those overlapping vocals or layered vocals and the constant turning over, you know, chugging train type of feel to the sonic configuration, it made me think of someone who just can't get over it, can't stop thinking about it, can't keep going through the same emotions again and again and again. And that line of like crying like a baby, like over you, it feels very much like that may have been a conceptual intention, the idea to have the track express sonically this inconsolable feeling that just won't go away, keeps coming to the fore, keeps coming to the fore. So I think maybe there was some clever sonic arrangement there as it relates to the themes. And yeah, walking around, tears falling like rain. I think there was a moment where he was like, should I call, should I not? So it sounds like it's over, but he still can't just, you know, put the phone down, let it be behind him and try to look forward and move on. He's just caught, he's stuck on this person. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot of pain, but maybe it's not being dealt with in the best way, which, again, like a baby, feels very much apropos in terms of the conceptualization of the feeling of the track. And yeah, again, maybe not as memorable a tune as something like I Ran, but definitely one that would sort of catch my ear in terms of the 80s sonics. It feels very mid-80s, which I guess, again, that's fair to say that this is not 82, this is 86. So, yeah, some of the other influences and the maybe shift in the way that synths and keyboards were being used by a lot of groups that are now just famous as, collectively, 80s groups, is appreciable to the ear in this one. So, yeah, I wonder how people will feel. Uh, again, I've noticed as we've gone through the album as a whole that it may not be people's favorite, but I'm always keen to sort of parse out the reasons why and to try to figure what aspects of it may be part of that different sound and different appreciation for people who had enjoyed most of what they'd done up to this point. Nevertheless, an intriguing tune and one that I think is well designed if indeed it's expressing that inconsolable, relentless emotional despair that feels the essence of the track. So in any case, let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Peace.